You know, the first person who used the term uh, photon, well, not the first, but he's the first person, is the reason why we got this idea of a light particle. It came from a guy called Leonard Troland. He was a scientist, except he was a psychologist. He died while uh, mountain climbing. He was into some really wacky stuff, like really crazy, like uh, Madame Blavatsky sort of crap. And this is where we get the idea of a light particle. And of course that was adopted. There's a neat 54 page book on the history of the term uh, photon. I really don't care about stuff like that, but specifically getting onto quantum, I'm about to talk about uh, James Kirk Maxwell and uh, Nikola Tesla and their statements on what light is. And it's no different than what I've stated. And I specifically told you in a prior video that um, everything that uh, current scientists, specifically the idiots of quantum, think light is, is completely irrelevant, uh, completely uh, nonsensical, excuse me, not irrelevant. Um, but nothing emits light. Light is not a particle. Light has no speed. Light doesn't transmit from point A to point B. Light is certainly not a wave. A wave is not a thing at all. A wave is what something does, so light's not a wave. Light is not a packet. It's not a wave particle. It's not a duality. All of this stuff is demonstrably provable. And of course, if you actually believe that light is a particle emission moving from point A to point B, then your brain-dead fool has been brainwashed by the current belief system. Well, right now, we are in an epoch of scientific belief. And as I've told you before in other videos, every 30 to 50 years, sometimes more, sometimes less, science has an epoch of crazy-ass notions. Yeah, and of course, we have all these wonderful inventions like computers and stuff. And of course, we'll say, well, quantum exists because we have quantum computers, but I just got done making an article about that. But uh, uh, descriptions and math, math never explains anything. But uh, so-called quantum computers are strictly electrical. They're dielectric and uh, magnetic. The term quantification or quanta cannot be uh, reified. You need to look up the term reification uh, by referring to uh, several phenomena. Otherwise, like my microwave, like I said, is a quantum heating device. But... Um, this is demonstrably true about light, um, fundamentally uh, current. Uh, and quantum, by their own emission, believes that uh, the foundation of quantum is atomistic, but right underneath that foundation is the primary foundation of quantum, is their crazy-ass notion that they understand what light is, and of course they absolutely don't. And I'm actually, if you think that my ideas about light are, you know, kind of uh, wacky, maybe some of you are you know, crazy enough to believe that, I will refer you now to some passages from Nikola Tesla and James Kirk Maxwell, who are in basically full agreement with what I've been telling you. Light is not a particle, and it's not a wave, and uh, the notion that it's moving from point A to point B is completely ridiculous, and uh, Maxwell and others uh, raised uh, this uh, regarding uh, vibrations of... Maxwell refer to the medium. He also mentions the ether many, many times. Anyway, here's a passage from James Clark Maxwell. You should download this. It's a free 54-page article on archive.org. It's called A Dynamical Theory of the Electromagnetic Field. This is from Maxwell. The agreement of the results seem to show that light and magnetism are affections of the same substance and that light is an electromagnetic uh, disturbance propagated uh, through the field according to the electromagnetic no laws, and uh, he refers to it as uh, the ether. Um... This is New York Times, April 8th, 1934, from Nikola Tesla, talking about the nature of light. He raises a lot of questions, specifically even in his time. This uh, quantum notion of light was, uh, it was in its infancy, but it was readily apparent to him and everybody else that this particle nonsense of light was uh, gaining strength. And that is, of course, the beginning of the current epoch that we're in, roughly. It's been growing. It didn't really take uh, hold until like the late 80s. It started growing, but then it took hold in the late 80s. We're currently in the epoch of stupidity, of atomistic uh, belief, uh, that of the religion of quantum. And that's what it is, a belief system. It's a religion. Um, they think that their math is validations of uh, their explanations. But all they have is theory, and they have math, but that is not a validation of explanations at all. Anyway, here's a, uh, this is Nikola Tesla on light. There's something frightening about the universe. We consider that our only senses of sound and sight make it beautiful. Um, we get to the part on the light. So a fascination of uh, electromagnetic theory of light advanced by Maxwell and subsequently experimentally investigated by Hertz was so great uh, that even now, although controverted, the, uh, he means idiots, the idiot scientific minds are under, uh, excuse me, not that, that passage, the scientific minds are under its sway. The theory uh, supposed the existence of a medium which was solid, yet uh, permitted bodies to pass through it without resistance. Uh, 
this uh, absurdity is tenuous behind the conception, yet according to our own conception of mechanical principles and ages of experience, such a medium was absolutely impossible. Light was wrongly considered to be a phenomena bound up in that kind of uh, medium, namely uh, transmitting transverse vibrations like a solid. Nikola Tesla importantly then says, what the then can light be if not a transverse vibration? I consider uh, this extremely important. Light cannot be anything but a longitudinal, he means z-axis or radial, i.e. the dielectric, a longitudinal disturbance in the ether. Nikola Tesla is right. I'm right. The idiot, brain-dead mental midgets, the scum of quantum are wrong. Light is not a particle. It doesn't have a speed. It's not an emission. Let me repeat that again. This is Nikola Tesla's exact words. Light cannot be anything but a longitudinal disturbance in the ether. Yeah? Let me emphasize ether enough there. Did I speak it loud enough? Involving alternating compressions and rarefactions. Light cannot be anything else than a type of sound wave in the ether. In other words, he's making an analogy saying that light is like a sound wave, except, of course, sound, of course, sound waves are disturbances of a medium, that being nitrogen and oxygen, i.e. the air. The air would be the medium, right? The medium of sound, because that's what sound is. Yeah? When I speak and my microphone picks it up, I'm not emitting anything. Yeah, a little bit of breath is coming out, but I'm not emitting anything when I speak and I create sound disturbances in the air. I'm not emitting anything. But idiot quantum believes that like a light bulb was emitting light. No, a light bulb is no different than me, a uh, light bulb speaking, if you will, and creating a disturbance in the ether. Let me repeat that again from Nikola Tesla. Light cannot be anything but a longitudinal disturbance in the ether involving alternating compressions and refractions. Light can be nothing else than a sound wave in the ether, analogously. Um, then he goes on. This is kind of important. He talks about the impossibility of uh, light being an emission. Uh, basically, he says it'd be impossible that, uh, it's impossible that light's an emission because the candle... Uh, would then emit light, which it does, at the same speed as uh, something super, super powerful, like the sun. And uh, this is uh, in uh, Nikola Tesla's description. So this is ridiculous. In other words, he's making the, uh, the premise that it's ridiculous to think that things emit light because a candle is emitting light at the same speed or the same power, if you will, as, as the sun does. And, uh, well... Nikola Tesla is right. Um, quantum's explanations are completely disconnected from their math, and it's completely disconnected from their theories. You know, I could make a discovery and then, uh, you know, show the math so that anybody could replicate the discovery, like an interaction of so and so, right? Here's the math, but that has no bearing on the explanation of the discovery. Math does not explain anything. Math does not explain anything. Here's the math equation, okay? It's a really simple one. E equals nu F, where energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. Talking about light, and um, the fundamental reality of this is that blue light is more powerful by like two something EV volts, like blue light Blue, blue end spectrum light, for example, is more powerful than red end spectrum light. This is also, too, why the, the rising sun and the setting sun looks red. The high energy or high capacitance light, because energy, yeah, yeah, high energy light, the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. By the way, when you go towards blue end light, the actual volume of the, uh, the light, in other words, the uh, transverse electrical magnetic, shrinks. And this, of course, is true of everything in nature. Smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. Because space is equal to magnetism. But power is not in magnetism. Power is in the dielectric. Yeah, that's why the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. Um, this is why uh, sunrises and sunsets look red, because the capacitance of uh, blue in spectrum light is much higher. And uh, it gets absorbed by uh, our air and the dust particles in the air, whereas the red light is able to pass through us. This is why 
the sunlight gets filtered, if you will, not literally filtered, but partially so filtered, but what's happening is the blue light's dropping out because it's high capacitance. Uh, another perfect analogy of uh, why we see red light on sunrises and sunsets, for example, imagine blue light as a super fast car. Yeah, we got a sharp turn in the, in the road up ahead, right? We got a blue light car and a red light car. Well, the red light uh, car is only traveling 50 miles an hour, so he can you know, make the turn, no problem. But the, uh, due to the capacitance and the nature of blue lights, he's going at 120 miles an hour and he ends up you know, slipping off the, the, the road and falling into the ditch. That's kind of a poor analogy of uh, capacitance. Of light. I actually think it's a pretty good one, but I keep trying to make these analogies in talking about uh, the capacitance of light. This is not my opinion, by the way. This is a fact. I mean, blue end spectrum light, the more towards you go towards blue end, you keep on going, you end up in the... Uh, and uh, into uh, gamma emissions, which is uh, super, super uh, high energy light, which actually is insanely small volume wise. And this is the reason why the fundamental particle that's being emitted in galactic jets um, from black holes is nothing other than ultra, ultra. In other words, the fundamental particle of the universe is, uh, is super high energy light. Isn't that amazing? You end up with energy so high that the particle is able to exist for X number of perdurable millennia because it becomes a ZTP, or a zero time particle. In other words, the fundamental subatomic particle of the universe, the photon, all neutrons become photons if they're free, this is a fact, and well researched and well established and experimentally proven over and over and over again. So there's only one fundamental particle, that this is just high energy light. And uh, that would actually fit in perfectly with Occam's razor as far as uh, explaining cosmic mechanics goes. Um, but yeah, when I talk about light, and it's not a wave, it's not a particle, it doesn't have a speed, nothing emits light. See, this is Nikola Tesla saying the same damn thing I just got done telling you, except more eloquently. You know, he was a reserved person. Tesla wasn't a bar brawler, which I don't go to bars, but Tesla is uh, softly spoken, if you will. I don't know how softly spoken he was when he called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot, which he did on many occasions. The reason why he called him that is because relativity tries to reify space as having properties and acting upon other things, which of course it doesn't. Space has no properties, it only has attributes. There's no such thing as bending space and time. Time is not a thing, it's only a measure of magnitudes, and space has no properties. And this is why Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot, which I find extremely funny. Anyway, I hope you like these videos. I hope you have a great weekend. If you like these videos, click the link below, send me an email, whatever. Okay? Thanks a bunch. Bye.